All right, let's review our relative pronoun versus interrogative pronoun, because we're going to need these today. So our relative pronoun. We, quai, quad, quies, quies, quies. Qui, qui. Quem, quam, quad. Quo, qua, quo. So who or what, which, um, of whom, of what, of which, to, for whom, what, which, uh, whom, what, which, uh, by, with, whom, what, which. Then in the plural, qui, quai, quai. Quorum, quorum, quorum. Quibus, quibus, quibus. Quos. Quas, quos, quibus, quibus, quibus. Now for the interrogative. So instead of qui, with the masculine and feminine, we start off with quis. Quis, quis, quid. Same for the uh, genitive though, quius all around. Quius, quius, quius. Same for the dative too, qui, qui. For the accusative, oops, both masculine and feminine are quem, are neuter here repeats its nominative form, quid. Quo for both masculine and feminine. Quo, quo, and also for new. That's the singular. Let's do the plural. Qui, quai, quai. 
essentially this is going to look the same as it does for the relative. So that's nice. Qui, qui, qui. Quorum. 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 Quibus all around. Quibus. Quibus. Where is it? There it is. Quos. 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 I say quos and quai. Because it is neuter and this is an accusative, so it's repeating its nominative form. Quibus, quibus, quibus. Okay, now we have those for uh, our reference here in the sentences we're going to be translating. So, how are we going to use these? These are for questions. So who, what, which, as questions. How are we going to use these? We're going to use these as relatives. Oh, I think I spot a mistake here. Error. This should be why why q u a e because it repeats the nominative form not quos whoops why so how are we using these relative pronouns refer back to an antecedent and we use them Antecedent, comma, who, which, dot, 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 comma. All right, let's pull up some of the sentences we're going to look at. First sentence. So what we're going to have is a blank. Okay. And the English word we want is which. Okay. So it's going to be one of our either interrogative or relative pronouns. We have to figure out from context what the pronoun is going to be. And then we have to translate the sentence. Weary. Curie bond. Okay, so am I going to need interrogative or relative here? Well, I've got a question mark here at the end. It will look a little messy. I've got a question mark here at the end. That's making me think. This is going to be an interrogative. Okay, so let's look at the rest of the sentence here really quickly. Mark our parts of speech. Here we have curie bond. This is a verb. This NT at the end, that's telling me that we're in third person plural. 
this BA here is telling me that we are, this is a tense indicator, it's telling me that we are in imperfect tense, okay? Imperfect, third person plural. So they, they were or they used to do something. Curé bon, this comes from uh, uh, the word curo, curare, which is to run. So they were running or they used to run. They were running. Okay, so we need a subject for that. And right before we have weary, this is either the uh, genitive singular or the nominative plural. Our verb here is third person plural and there's nothing else that could be our subject here. So this weary is going to be a nominative plural. So the men, or men, let's put men. Men, they were running, but it's a question mark. We need this right here. We've decided it's an interrogative because it is a question mark here. So let's pull out our chart for reference. Okay, so we need, the interrogative here refers to our subject. Okay, so we need it to be, um, a masculine because interrogatives have to match in number and case. They don't always have to match in, or they have to number match in number and gender. They don't always have to match in case, but in a short sentence like this, they would match in case. So we need a masculine, a plural um, interrogative here. Masculine, plural, nominative. So, Mas if it was singular, it would be quis. Plural, we need qui. If this were feminine uh, women, we would use quai. If it were something in the neuter, we would use quai also. Um, but it's masculine, so we're going to need qui here. Qui. Qui weary curi bont. Which men uh, were running or used to run. Which men were running? All right, let's move on to another sentence. So this one starts weary. To whom scrivete nonsense stulti? Okay. Weary, scribetis, nonsense, stulti. Now, do we see a question mark at the end? No. So, odds are we're going to need to use a relative pronoun here. Okay? So, let's pull out our relative pronoun chart. We're going to need relative, but also we're going to need to find, if we have relative, that means that we need to find an antecedent. So, the antecedent is the noun that precedes antecedent comes before the uh, the pronoun here. That antecedent is weary. So weary could be the, um, the nominative plural. It could be the genitive singular of we're weary. Uh, let's look at the rest of the sentence to see if we have any clues as to whether or not this is a plural or if it's a genitive, a plural um, nominative or a genitive singular. So we have two verbs here, scribetis and sunt. Sunt is a third person plural from sum esse, so from the verb to be. This non here we're going to fold in. It's a negation of the verb. It's telling us not this verb, okay? So sunt would be they are. This non in here negating the verb would be they are not. OK, 
Okay. Now this verb right here, scribeti, scribeti, from scribo, scribere, this T-I-S at the end is telling me that I have a plural second person. So a y'all, scribo, scribere is to write. So y'all write. This is, um, so I have to say future, y'all ah, will write tricky third conjugation. So they are, we don't need to find a subject for scribetsis here because the subject is within the verb itself, y'all, y'all will write. Um, we need to find the subject for non-sunt here, they are not. So that's going to indicate to me that this, um, this noun right here is going to be a nominative plural and not a genitive singular, okay? We can go ahead and break this up into uh, the relative clause and the main clause. The way we do that is we start at the relative pronoun and we go until we find a verb. So to whom, we'll uh, fill in our relative pronoun there in a moment, scribetsis, this is our relative clause. We could lift it out of the sentence and still have the rest of the sentence make sense. Weary, nonsense, stulty, this right here, this is the main clause. So let's do the main clause first. Weary is um, men, men, the men, Men, they are not. Stulty, this is, um, stulty right here is an adjective. It's uh, from stulta, stulta, stultum, which means foolish, okay? So we can, this would be either the genitive singular or the nominative plural. So it's an adjective, which means it's a modifier. And they have the same, ending here because they're both second declension, um, most likely stilty here is modifying men. Foolish. So we have a noun and a modifier, an adjective, in both in the nominative here and we have a form of to be um, for you within this sentence. So what we have here is a nominative predicate. Which remember means um, this equals this. It's drawing equivalency between two things that are in the nominative with the uh, with the form of sumethi. Okay, so the men they are not foolish. Okay, so now this relative clause right here is going to give us more information about the men. So we need to whom. Okay, so to whom giving, showing, telling, that is going to require a form of uh, quibus in the dative, but which form do we use? Do we use qui? Doesn't matter so much if we use a masculine, feminine, or neuter, because they're all the same form. Yay. Um, do we use qui, a singular, or quibus, a plural? Well, our antecedent here, weary, is a masculine plural. So we need to look for a masculine plural. So we can't use qui here. Those are singular. So those are off the table for us. We can use quibus, quibus, or quibus. Luckily, masculine, feminine, and neuter are all the same form, so it doesn't matter which one of those we choose, but if they were all different forms, we choose the masculine form here. So quibus. To whom? To whom's? To whom? Quibus. So men to whom y'all will write, they are not foolish. So if we translate this sentence into, if we kind of retranslate it into English, the men to whom
y'all will write are not fools. All right, let's move on to another sentence. In, then our pronoun will go here, either interrogative or relative. So this would be which herbibus. This is a longer one. In when yes. And it's got two relative or two pronouns where to tem day another pronoun either interrogative or relative which speak it okay so be a little bit harder to tell right off the bat whether or not we are going to need a relative or and or an interrogative here because we have a question mark but we also have um, a, a pronoun needed at the very beginning and almost toward the end okay so let's look at um, parts of speech and kind of uh, look through the context of our sentence before we make a decision on what kind of uh, pronoun we're going to need here. So deke is right here. This is a verb. This is is telling me that we have a second person singular. So deke is from deco dekere. This is a third declension. So what do we know about third declension? Is that third declension does not use its vowel that terminal vowel to, um, to form its present. It uses an I. So this is going to be our present active indicative form. So you, you speak, you tell, you say. Okay, so we'll just use you say for here. Let's see if we have any other verbs. And when yes, also. That S at the end, again, is telling me that we have a second person, singular. The IE here is telling me um, that we have a future active indicative. So you will, and in Wenius is coming from in Wenio and Weniere, which is come upon, discover, find, will do you will find okay great so we have subjects here our subjects are both within our verbs so this s right here is telling me the subject is you and both these you great so we have a subject and we have a verb so you will find and you say okay so we're gonna go ahead and put these into two separate clauses, okay? We are going to include the preposition because the preposition is uh, part of our verb, or part of our um, pronoun here. So, day pronoun, decus, and in pronoun, where to term? because that we're including word to term instead of cutting it off at the end of the verb here because the verb needs an object you will find. Okay, let's start with this first one up here. So in 
this is a preposition that can go with either um, a, an accusative or an ablative. Looking at our clause, we have an, um, an accusative right here with virtutum. Virtutum, this means virtue. This is an accusative. It's going to be an object. Virtue. It is unlikely that we have, um, for this type of sentence here, it is unlikely that we're going to have multiple objects, um, direct objects. I'll even put that right there. Direct object. It's unlikely we're going to have multiple direct objects, and it's unlikely we're going to have multiple accusatives um, serving as direct objects. So that means up here, this preposition is uh, serving as an ablative preposition rather than an accusative preposition. Okay, also we don't have a, um, a verb of uh, motion toward, which we would need to have this right here be an accusative preposition. Okay, so, so far for the sentence we have, you will find virtue. Excellent. So we have subject, verb, object. Now we need to resolve what's happening here. If in is not working as an accusative preposition, then it's working as an ablative preposition, and it's working as um, an ablative preposition for location, okay? So if we have an ablative, oh, my goodness, this pen has just decided it doesn't work. We have an ablative here that helps us in what kind of, um, or what the form of the pronoun is going to be. It hasn't quite gotten us to whether or not we need an interrogative or a relative, but at least we know we need an ablative. Um, so we need a, a location. This is going to be an ablative place where. This pen is, the tip is not looking great. So herbibus, this is from herbs, herbis, meaning um, city. This is the plural form and it's either dative or ablative. We already have ablative of a place where happening with the, um, with the pronoun. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is another ablative form rather than a dative form because we don't have any verbs of giving, showing, or telling here. Okay. So in blank, so which herbibus or in which cities you will find virtue. So because this is a question, this is at the very beginning, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is an, inter uh, yeah, an interrogative um, pronoun that needs to go here. Luckily, the form is the same if we pull out our sheet here. That's our ablative form. Um, we're going to need to look for a plural for bibus. So it's going to be quibus. If gender was, um, was a factor here, uh, herbs, herbis is a feminine. So quibus. So in which cities you will find virtue. Okay, so that's our first, um, our first clause there. So day, that is another ablative uh, preposition here. So day is like with regard to, concerning, about, from, so which you say. Okay. This verb right here, like I said, could be you say, you tell, you speak. We're going to use you speak or you tell. So day we said here could be like about. 
about or mm, with regard to concerning um, we need to so what we have here is an interrogative at the beginning and a relative at the end um, so if this is going to be our relative it's going to be an ablative relative uh, a relative pronoun that is in the ablative because you know our um, preposition here is indicating that it's an ablative uh, so we need to have an antecedent uh, remember that antecedents need to match in gender and in number but they don't need to match in case our antecedent here is going to be the noun that precedes it because antecedent means come before um, so we're to tem is going to be the antecedent. So we're talking about, what is it we're talking about? We're talking about virtue. So we need to have a singular, um, a singular uh, relative form here. And virtue of vir is, a, uh, is a feminine noun. So we're, and it's singular. So we're gonna need to look for a feminine singular ablative we need qua so de qua so we've got both we've got a relative and or relative and an interrogative so in quibus herbibus in winius we're tutum de qua dicus um so in which uh city city right here in which city sorry in which cities um, will you find virtue uh, about which you speak? So, yeah, we'll write that out. In which cities, in which cities, whoops, will where did my green come from? Will you find virtue find virtue or the virtue about which you speak, you say, you tell. About which you speak. All right, let's do one more. All right, tempora. Tempora. And here's where either our relative pronoun or interrogative pronoun will go. Tolerabamus. Tolerabamus. Non erat. Errant, Felicia. Okay, tempora. Ooh, yuck. Tempora, and then this is where our um, it's going to be which is where our either interrogative or relative pronoun will go. Tempora, pronoun, tolera bamus, non errant, Felicia. Alrighty. We have two verbs here. Errant, and we're gonna go ahead and fold non in here because non is a negation here. So that NT at the end tells you what? That this is a third person plural. And this is errant, which is an imperfect form of sum esse. So they were, they used to be. So they need a, a plural um, subject here. So they 
were um, they were not or they they used to not. or they did not used to. Used to not, they did not used to. All right, let's look at the other um, verb. Talera vamos. The MUS here is telling me that this is a first person plural. So we, and this BA is telling me, this is a tense indicator. It's telling me that we are in imperfect. Okay, so, we, subject is contained with in the verb here, we were, we were, I believe this is tolerating. Yeah, so we were tolerating, we were bearing, we were enduring, not like enduring. We were enduring, we used to endure. We were enduring. Okay, let's go ahead and break this up into our clauses here. So, tempora non errant felicia. Tempora here is from tempus temporis. This is a neuter plural. And that is the accusative or nominative plural form. We need to have a plural subject here for errant, for non-errant, and this is our subject of that verb, because there's no way it could be accusative. There's nothing for, nothing to take this as an object. So, tempora times, times they were not or they used to not. They were not Felicia. Oops. Felicia comes from Felix. Uh, it's an adjective. And this is the nominative plural form. So we have another predicate nominative here with tempora and Felicia. They were not blessed, they were not happy, they were not lucky, successful, fruitful, we'll say favorable. Okay, so times um, did not used to be favorable. Um, used to. No. Times, they did not used to be favorable. That is our main clause here. Um, so I don't see a question mark, and this is in the middle. Um, I believe this is going to be a relative pronoun. So for a relative pronoun, um, we need to look for an antecedent. Our antecedent here is tempora. So it does not have to match in case, but needs to match gender, which is neuter, and number, which is plural. So this relative pronoun right here needs to be neutral and, or neutral, neuter and plural. Okay. Tolerabamus, this is our sub, or our verb and subject here. And um, our pronoun is going to be an object. It's the thing we're tolerating. So we're going to need something in the object form, which is going to be an accusative. So we need to find a neuter, plural, accusative form of the relative pronoun. Let's look at our chart. So we want a plural, neuter, accusative form. Why? Why? So our sentence is, so the times, so which, I 
because in this clause, we are the subject. We whoops, were enduring times we were enduring runaway pens, my goodness, times which we were enduring did not used to be favorite. All right, hope that cleared up some usage issues, questions. We'll look at some more another time.